Thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tip. I'm glad you made it. Today I wanted to talk to you about static conditions and how important they are to get to 100% permanent and total. So please hit the thumbs up for me, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff because it really helps to drive this information into the hands of more of us, right? And that's really what we're trying to do is take care of each other, right? Just inter interlocking arms and walking, right? So here we go. Static conditions are absolutely 100% necessary for a 100% permanent and total rating. There is no other way around it. You have to have a static overall situation. Now, with that being said, you can have conditions that do have uh, a non-static uh, kind of designator to them uh, and still be 100% permanent in total. However, the caveat there is that you may have eight conditions, but six of those conditions are static, and those six conditions by themselves take you to 100%. If those six conditions that are static take you to 100% rating, right, with the VA funny math, then you can be 100% permanent in total. You could have those two other conditions that take you, you know, the math just keeps going, right? Um, but, and you don't need those to be 100%. And those could, could not be considered uh, um, static. And that's fine. The, the rule here with the VA is, is one is, is that you're already static, right? So then the rule now becomes with the VA that you should not have future exams on those two other conditions because it wouldn't change your overall rating of 100% permanent in total. So that's an important thing to know that those uh, conditions, since they don't matter, the VA basically says they're not going to waste their time doing future exams for you. Uh, so for example, I'm in that boat, right? So I have enough conditions that take me to 100% permanent in total, being that they're static conditions. And I have one other condition that is not static, but I don't need it. If it went away, if it went to zero, it doesn't matter. I'm still at 100%. So I'm gonna tell you a little story on, on my situation because I kind of did it backwards. So, and, and I'm just going to share my, my kind of a portion of my claims process, right? Just to kind of shed some light on how it can work, right? So I'll fast forward through, through some of it. My initial claim that I did after I got out of the Marine Corps, and, and for those that don't know, I was in the Marine Corps first, then I got out for a while, then I ended up joining the Army National Guard, and I did another six years there. However... During the Army National Guard, I hurt my eye and that sucked. So anyway, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I filed a claim. And I, and I don't even, honestly, I don't remember who told me to do it or why. I, I, I don't remember any of it. But I filed a claim. Somehow, some way, I, I figured out that I should do it or I was told or something. And this is back in the 90s. So I filed my claim uh, for uh, my back issues and heartburn, right? GERD. Two things. And no research, no looking into things. I mean, you know, computers were still kind of whatever. You used Excel. The, the, the internet was kind of, I mean, it's not like today, right? So anyway, I did zero research. I had no clue what I was doing. I'm pretty sure I just filled out paper form, wrote things down, zero diagnosis, and just sent it in. Because I thought at the time, looking back, that, okay, you say the things you have, then they'll check you and basically diagnose you and then push it forward. Yeah, that's not how it works. So I was denied for both. And being young, and and we'll just say being young. Being young, I just threw my hands in the air and said, forget it, who cares? I don't need you, I'm moving on. I have to get work, I need to you know pay for the house, I need to take care of the family, all that stuff. So I just moved on and forgot about it. I got the paperwork in the mail, didn't read anything past you were denied. No appeal stuff. I didn't read anything. I didn't care, again, because I was young. So I moved on. Then I ended up joining the Army National Guard, hurt, hurt my eye um, during a, a, we were doing, I think it was 120. So 120 mortars and something, I don't know what, something flew in my eye and it jacked me up. So anyway, I thought to myself, well, that sucks because now I have to file a VA claim. 
So I filed, so I dusted off stuff, filed another claim, bam, it comes back. And I ended up um, getting uh, um, rated for my back, which was good. And then I ended up getting a 0% rating for my eye, which is really irritated me. So, But now I'm older, right? So now I did research, looked into it, and figured out how to do an appeal, figured out the um, schedule of ratings and DBQs and, and all of that stuff, and filed uh, my appeal and got that back, and everything was fine. Now I'm fast-forwarding now to, to the end part. So now... I filed some other things, got some, you know, uh, seven claims later, right? So I did like seven or eight claims, three appeals. One got rejected, one got approved, one I pushed to the Board of uh, uh, Appeals and was seen by a law judge. So now at the very end of my journey to 100%, I ended up finally getting approved for my last condition from the VA. In the meantime... I also had an appeal that was at the Board of Appeals. So I had an appeal sitting there on docket, long, you know, long wait times. But I filed another claim that got approved, and that pushed me to 100%. But that last condition that I did had a future exam like in four or five years. So it wasn't, I wasn't going to be permanent in total. So that was just 100%, which was great. You know, don't, I, 100% is a good place to be. So then... I had that last condition that was not static sitting there. In the meantime, I had that Board of Appeals um, on docket waiting for that appeal to be looked at. And through that process, I elected to, you know, hey, I'm giving you everything I have. I just want you to look at it and make a decision. And here's all the additional information. Here's everything. Um, I don't even need to be there, look at it, read it through, make your own decision. And uh, sure enough, they did. And they came back and they awarded me uh, a higher percentage. And that higher percentage with and static made all my other static conditions plus that one equate to 100% total rating. So now I didn't need that last condition anymore. So... Now, all of my static conditions add up to 100%. I had this other condition that I filed that took me to 100 originally until I got that Board of Appeals approved that had this future exam. So the VA awarded me the, the new rating for that uh, Board of Appeals decision, and that was great, but I was still just permanent or just uh, uh, total 100% not permanent because their system wasn't reading everything correctly. I mean, it's kind of all happening backwards, right? So I ended up filing um, a request with the VA requesting them to move me to 100% since all of my static conditions or move me to 100% permanent and total because all of my static conditions added up to 100%. And I no longer needed this other uh, condition to get me there, the one with the future exam. So effectively, you could, you VA, could reduce that rating to a 0%, and I'm still at 100, so it doesn't matter. And they did, and that was within, I don't know, probably within a month. So filed that, they came back, said, hey, congratulations, you're 100% permanent in total, and then there I was. So uh, just static conditions are very, very important. You can work with your doctor. Oftentimes, your, you and your doctor know if your condition is static, meaning that it's not likely to get better, more than the VA and more than the CMP examiner who sees you for 10 minutes of your life. So you can have your doctor write you a letter stating that you've been seen for X number of years for this specific condition and that it is considered static. It is most likely never going to uh, improve. In fact, it will most likely get worse in time. And those types of letters will help you establish a static uh, designation probably quicker than if you are just crossing your fingers hoping the VA makes the right call. So with that, we'll go ahead and cut it there. I really appreciate you. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.